Welcome to Bloomberg Quint. I'm in a conversation with Neeraj Gambhir, the head of fixed income at Nomura India, and we're here to discuss the potential implications of the union budget 2017-18 on the currency and the debt markets. Uh, Neeraj, the economic survey has argued for some changes in the operational framework of the FRBM Act, leaving some room for the government to set a tar- fiscal deficit target of over a little over 3% in uh, FY 2018. What is your expectation of the fiscal deficit number? Because that's the most important number that the bond market will be tracking. Yeah, so amongst the few things that the bond market looks very closely at is the fiscal deficit number per se. Uh, last year we were at three and a half. You know, if the path of consolidation is to be followed, it should be three this year. Mm-hmm. But there is some talk that we could be a little higher than three, uh, given the fact that demonetization has impacted the economic growth and the government should be spending a little bit more uh, to counter that, uh, you know, uh, that that effect on the growth. S- but you know, our economist estimate is that three percent is something that the government can achieve. Uh, and that will be the most prudent way uh, going forward. Fiscal consolidation is very important for the market. I think it's very important for us to understand is that while we focus a lot on the central government's borrowing program and the mm-hmm. central government deficit, uh, the state government's borrowing program is equally important. Uh, so while the market looks at what the central government is doing, the states, on the other hand, have been increasingly borrowing a larger amount of money. So just the consolidation by the center is not good enough anymore. Uh, and in that context, if the center doesn't consolidate, then it becomes a little bit more uh, you know, problematic for the bond market. So I do hope that we stick to 3%. And I do hope that the borrowing program is uh, uh, is consistent with a three percent, you know, fiscal deficit requirement. What sort of a number, Neeraj, do you think would be an absolutely negative surprise? I think anything more than three point two, three point two five, will definitely be in the negative zone. Uh, I think the market is somewhere between three to three and a quarter. Uh, if we get somewhere in between. Uh, the, be- the the closer to three we are, the better off we are. But if we get somewhere close to you know three point one, uh, that's also fine. Okay, you were just talking about the increase in the supply of state bonds. I just wanted to understand: Do you think that the markets are going to be able to absorb both these government and states borrowing? Yeah, if you so if you look at the combined borrowing uh, by the states and the center, uh, next year our estimate is somewhere close to 7.8 lakh crores is the total amount of borrowing that the center and states have to do net. The gross amount is a lot higher. It's mm-hmm. about you know ten odd lakh crores. Uh, so it's a fairly large amount of borrowing that the uh, that the that the, com- the governments combined need to do from the market. Uh, this year we are seeing a little bit of a challenge in terms of demand because in the past we had the uh, Reserve Bank of India buying about a lakh crore or thereabouts. Uh, at least in the last year, they b- you know they bought about a lakh crore from the market. This year, because the liquidity is good, we don't see that demand coming through. Uh, the uh, deposit growth of the banking system is also not that great. Uh, if you strip away the effect of monetization, sorry, demonetization, you you see that the deposit growth at the banking system is running quite low. I think close to six percent or so. Mm-hmm. So next year, even if they grow at ten percent, we still don't have enough growth in the banking balance sheet. So the SLR requirement may not be as large. So there are some challenges on the demand side. And hence, it's very important that the net supply side is managed. Otherwise, the uh, you know there will be a tendency in the bond market for the yields to harden up. Okay. So, as you said, the yield curve is expected to steepen in 2017. Yes. If so, what do you think are going to be the implications? So, uh, you know, when we think about interest rates, uh, there are three parts to the interest rates. One is obviously the uh, the policy rates. The second is what happens to the government bond market, mm-hmm. and the third is what happens to the real interest rates in the economy, which is basically the rates at which corporates borrow from the banking right. system and you know, the deposit rates. <coughs> so different parts of the market are expected to behave differently next year. Uh, we don't see much room for uh, reduction in the policy rates. I think about 25 basis points in the month of Feb uh, or possibly in April. <coughs> On the government bond side, I think we've already seen a pretty strong rally over the last two years. Uh, if you look at the 10-year bond yield, which we are currently close to about you know, 6.40, yep. and the overnight rate is close to 6 quarter, um, even if you assume that there is a 25 basis point rate cut, you still are talking about a spread of about 25 or 30 basis points uh, between the overnight and the 10-year yield. That's too low, right? That's too low when you talk about the fact that we are 
probably close to the end of the easing cycle. So, the government bond yields could actually st steepen up, the longer end bond yields could actually go up a little bit more from here uh, and we could see somewhere close to 50, 60, 70 basis points of steepness between the overnight and the, and the longer end. I think given the fact that liquidity is pretty adequate in the system, actually quite surplus in the system, the banking system will continue to be in a direction of cutting rates, mm -hmm. both on the deposit side and the lending side. Uh, there isn't enough credit demand in the system. So while the bond market yield curve may steepen up, the, uh, the, the, the rates in the real economy, the rates that affect you and me and the, and, the, and the borrowers and the lenders may actually come down a little bit more from here. So you could see a little divergence in terms of what happens in the government bond market versus what happens in the, in the banking system. Right. How long we before we move to the 6% mark for the 10-year yield? It's looking a little difficult right now mm -hmm. uh, because we don't expect the policy rates to go below 6% at least for now. We need to see a very steady and consistent uh, reduction in the inflation rate and more importantly the core inflation rate mm -hmm. for us to anticipate more rate cuts from RBI. <coughs> so unless and until we see the policy rate come down significantly from here, uh, I don't think we see 6% in terms of bond yields. I think it's more likely we'll be closer to 6 half than 6%. Okay, Neeraj, let's talk about the Indian currency which is uh, more or less remains stable within that 67.8 to 62.8 range. Do you think the rupee needs to depreciate from the sub 68 levels that it is at right now? So if you look at uh, rupee as a currency, I think it's been pretty uh, stable and reasonably uh, strong as compared to some of the other currencies given the fact that we are in a fairly consistent dollar strength cycle at this point in time. Uh, even compared to some of our Asian pairs, I think rupee hasn't really depreciated as much. Uh, so that outperformance of rupee, we expect it to continue. Mm -hmm. Even though the depreciation may be there, but it would still be a currency which, you know, may not sort of depreciate as much against dollar, particularly if, uh, you know, the macro story around India continues to stay good. Um, yes, uh, there is a need for the currency to be on the weaker side. Uh, because the relative outperformance means that you know we are becoming relatively less competitive as the rest of the world, uh, and uh, we are in a world where you know every uh, every economy, every every country is trying to make sure that the currency is competitive. Even U.S. has sort of said that the dollar is too strong for them. So uh, I think the need to make sure that our currency is competitive and doesn't appreciate in real terms too much uh, will be there. But I don't think Reserve Bank is going to actively engineer a depreciation here. I think it's going to go along with what the market does and try to manage the volatility at the uh, you know at, at the margin do you see the indian currency breaching that 70 per dollar mark anytime soon uh, i think over a period of next 12 to 18 months if you look at the relative differential of inflation between us and most of the developed world and certainly in us it's about 5% uh, or actually it's about 4%. So if you apply that 4% differential, um, you should see a number closer to 70. Um, uh, but that's sort of from pure fundamentals perspective. Uh, we really need to see how the flows shape over the next year uh, to see whether that 70 mark is actually met or not. That's exactly what I was trying to come uh, to. I was going to ask you about um, what is really causing this unabated FI outflows from Indian debt. Do you really see uh, this muted demand for Indian debt continuing, especially given the fact that you already have a decent 4% interest rate differential like you mentioned? Is that not a, a good enough risk premium? I think the risk premium is good enough. I think what you need to see is what's happening in the rest of the world. Uh, we have seen a pretty sharp uh, sell-off in US bonds and the US yields have actually hardened up quite a lot. Uh, you know, sympathetic to that move, we've also seen a similar sort of sell-off in some of the other, um, you know, comparative Asian, you know, economies. Uh, and that has made those bond markets relatively a lot more interesting mm -hmm. than where we are. Uh, we, on the other hand, have actually uh, rallied by approximately 70, 80 basis points over the last sort of 12 months. So that sort of reduces our relative attractiveness uh, compared to some of the other, uh, you know, uh, emerging markets. Uh, but I think if you look at from a broad fundamentals perspective, we still have a pretty good macro story. Uh, we are looking at a fairly stable currency. Our external account is pretty good. Uh, and we still have a, 
inflation which is on the downside in the downside trajectory. So I feel that the market will come back. Uh, I think investors will find uh, that Indian uh, bonds are still reasonably attractive. It's just that we can't have that kind of return that we were, ex you know, we are used to over the last two years, given the fact that bond market has rallied quite a lot over the last two years. So it's it's a lot more uh, of a story of uh, consistent, steady returns rather than a big, uh, sharp reduction in yields. All right, Neeraj, thank you so much for talking to us. It was thank a you. pleasure talking to you. That's all from us.